Hello everyone, here we go. Today is Monday and I know the wait is over and it's 12.30 p.m. and here we are uh, and health is well. And we brought you a very, very, very good eye doctor, Dr. Prachi Dua, <coughs> who is ophthalmologist in New York, New York uh, and affiliated with Lenox Mill uh, Hospital at Northwell Health. She received her medical degree from State University of New York Downstate Medical College of Medicine and has been practicing between six to 10 years. Ophthalmologists diagnose and treat eye uh, diseases, including vision loss, detached retinas, cataracts, and glaucoma. And she performed laser retina surgery, refractive surgery, and lens rep uh, replacement operations. We are so happy. Dr. Prachi Dua, you are here with us to give the community, you know, talk on cataract surgery, which is your special specialist in that. And I just want to tell you some patient told me you are very kind, smart, and has a great sense of humor. So Dr. Prachi Dua, we welcome you here. And uh, I also welcome Dr. Jack Kalra. Um, she has more than 40 years experience and uh, she is with me in health as well. Dr. Well, uh, Jack Kalra, welcome. And here you go. Hello, Dr. Prachi Dua. Welcome to our Health and Wealth show. And of course, always welcome Jyoti Ji. Without Jyoti Ji, we won't be here. And all the people who will join us today will definitely benefit from this. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing you, Prachi. And I know you work in Lenox Hill, but I see you in the community, in Desi Doctors News. You were so involved during the COVID time. It was un. Believable. Your services were very important to our community, and I'm so looking forward. And please, you can give us your uh, review about eye and cataract. And as we get older, we all are going to need that. So thank you for coming, and let's start. Okay. Thank you guys so much for um, inviting me. Um, so I'm a cataract and cornea specialist at Northwell Health. Um, I mostly practice on Long Island and Great Neck, um, but I also do practice at Manhattan Eye near um, Throat Hospital like once a, once a week. Um, I mostly do surgeries at like the um, Syosset um, Surgical Center and Garden City Center and also um, at Manhattan Eye um, and ER Hospital in the Upper East Side. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to start off by talking um, about cataract um, and what cataract surgery entails. Um, and basically, um, how do you personally know when you actually are developing a cataract? Um, so we'll start off with the question, what is a cataract? Um, a cataract is basically the clouding or pacification of our natural lens. Uh, we're all born with a clear lens um, that focuses light um, that we see on the retina. And um, basically a, a cataract is a, the clouding or pacification of that lens. So from a clear color, it naturally turns into um, a yellow like color um, due to um, natural like um, enzyme reactions associated with aging of the lens. Um, and as the cataract advances, um, it can become, it can take on a dark brown color. Um, and if you've ever noticed uh, like, you know, farmers, um, in India or, or patients and you see that they have a white pupil, that's usually a very like advanced um, cataract. Um, so um, what, what are the symptoms um, of, a, of a cataract? Basically um, what cataract can cause is um, dullness or yellowing of vision. So basically the colors um, aren't as bright anymore. Um, patients start developing blurry or dim vision. Um, for some, uh, for some patients, they start having like uh, difficulty with reading at first, and then eventually their distance, like vision, uh, gets compromised. Um, or sometimes um, patients can, uh, depending on, um, you know, whether they're uh, nearsighted or farsighted, they can actually gain secondary vision and be able to read without glasses. Um, so those are all symptoms of a cataract. Um, other other uh, symptoms can include glare um, at nighttime. Patients can have ghost images um, from cataracts or uh, distortion of their vision in general. Um, so basically, uh, an interesting fact is that cataract actually means waterfall. Um, and the first documented treatment of a cataract was actually referred to as couching. And the practice actually started in India um, for the treatment of uh, cataracts. Um, 
And basically it spread throughout the Roman Empire, medieval Europe and sub-Saharan Africa. And basically back, back in the medieval times, they would um, basically make an incision on the eye and use a knife or rod to push our natural lens uh, to the back of the eye. And they would actually use a patch um, applied with cotton, uh, uh, cotton wool and ghee um, to the eye. So the, the actual practice of like cataract surgery started in India. So that's actually an interesting fact. Um, so risk factors um, for cataracts include age. That's the most common cause. Um, diabetics can develop cataract at an earlier age. Um, steroid use. Um, so if you're on inhalational steroids um, or uh, you're taking to oral steroids or IV steroids or topical steroids, that can increase um, the risk of developing a cataract. So some patients can develop a cataract in their 40s. Um, so we do have uh, diabetics and patients that are on chronic steroids for autoimmune disorders uh, come in to see us um, in their 40s and they get operated on. Uh, UV exposure. So that's why we always tell older patients, like, you know, you should always wear protective sunglasses, like when you're out in the sun um, to help you uh, to protect your eyes from developing a cataract. Smoking increases the risk of um, developing a cataract earlier. Um, any kind of inflammation or chronic inflammatory disease in the eye, um, a history of any kind of trauma. Um, and then genetic like predisposition might um, cause you to develop a cataract um, also. Um, so as I said, um, basically uh, the symptoms include blurred vision at distance or near glare. Um, so a lot of patients come in saying that you know, when they're looking at the traffic lights, they see multiple um, halos around the traffic lights. So that's a symptom of a cataract. Poor night vision. So, you know, a lot of patients say that now, like, I don't feel comfortable driving at night anymore. Um, as I said, loss of contrast, um, you know, colors aren't discernible. Um, and um, rarely, uh, you know, besides uh, vision issues, like rarely do cataracts cause like increased pressure um, in the eye. Um, but that, but that would happen. That usually happens to patients that are not being followed regularly by an ophthalmologist. Um, so that's why we always say that you should definitely go to an ophthalmologist like once, um, once a year. Um, so how do we evaluate for cataracts? Um, when you come in uh, to the ophthalmologist office, we do a comprehensive eye exam. We dilate your eyes um, with with dilating drops. So you'll have uh, so make sure that you come with somebody um, to the ophthalmologist's office because you'll have like blurry vision while driving and you won't be able to see for three to four hours um, after being dilated. Um, so we check we check your vision um, in the office and then we basically refract, meaning that we first want to assess whether or not a simple pair of eyeglasses helps correct your vision. If the eyeglasses help correct your vision to like almost 2020, 2025, uh, we say that you're not a candidate for um, cataract surgery unless you're having significant glare at night where you feel that you're going to get into a car accident. Um, so that's the first thing. So the first thing is checking the prescription for the glasses before we go ahead and decide whether or not to do cataract surgery. Um, if we deem that you do have a visually significant cataract, meaning that no matter what prescription uh, we put in front of your eyes, your vision does not get better, um, what we'll do is that we'll do some measurements um, in the office um, for, for cataract uh, uh, testing. So we take um, a couple of measurements. We measure the cornea, the anatomy of the cornea. Um, and uh, basically we, we also evaluate parts of the eye to make sure that you don't have a disease that might cause like extra uh, swelling, corneal swelling after surgery. Um, we do glare testing to see that under glare conditions, um, which simulate like nighttime driving, like what your actual like vision is to give us a better idea whether or not we should proceed with surgery. Um, so those are the, that's the pre-op um, evaluation. So management is first glasses um, until otherwise. And, you know, the reason is um, because there, there's always complications after any kind of uh, surgery. Um, and, you know, the risk is less than 1%. It's a very low risk, um, but the risks are not limited to um, infection. Um, you can have corneal swelling, like after cataract surgery, you can have swelling in the retina, especially in patients that are diabetics. Um, you can have something called um, a posterior capsular uh, rupture where uh, the lens is actually um, supported by these fibers. And sometimes, um, you know, as, as patients age, if they had a history of trauma or if they have poor anatomy in general, uh, this might require that the patient undergo like a second um, eye surgery um, if the bag is compromised uh, during surgery. Um, 
So basically what the steps entail is that it's an elect. So first of all, cataract surgery is an elective procedure. Like we, as I mentioned before, we only do it if it negatively impacts your um, activities of daily life. Um, and if like, for example, the retina surgeon says that I need to better be able to evaluate the retina um, in patients like diabetics, and I can't see the retina because of the cataract. Um, so it's a very it's a very common procedure. So first of all, it's elective, and second, it's a very common procedure. Actually, annually on a global um, level, there are 19 million cataract surgeries performed every year. Um, in America itself, it's three million, um, and uh, that number actually, uh, based on stats like for 2020, was supposed to grow to 32 million. Um, the kind of anesthesia that's required for a cataract surgery, it's basically topical. Um, it's, um, you'll basically put, be given light sedation um, where you'll be actually aware of what's happening but not feeling any kind of uh, pain. So um, the reason for this is because when the cataract surgeon is operating on your eye, uh, they need to be able to tell you to look up, down, left and right. Um, so that's why we don't completely place the patient under general unless like the patient has like severe anxiety or there's a, a problem that makes them not be able to uh, tolerate like light sedation. Um, sometimes they could give you local anesthesia through um, an injection also um, if they deem you like non-cooperative uh, for the surgery. So um, basically um, the, we give you an antibiotic drop um, to start the day before surgery. Um, you have to take antibiotic drops and a steroid drop for one uh, up to four weeks after surgery. Um, the only restrictions basically for the week after surgery is no heavy lifting, um, no bending for a week, um, a shield uh, you put on it at bedtime because we just don't want you to accidentally rub the eye. Um, and you're basically seen the day after surgery, the week after surgery, and the month after surgery. Um, I, we usually advise patients not to travel, to not to make travel plans um, during that month. Um, just in case there is a complication, we just want you to be close by, um, you know, to, to, to the ophthalmologist. Um, otherwise you can walk, uh, you know, light, light walking after surgery is completely okay. Like I tell patients that they could continue their life, no eye makeup, obviously for like one week, but you could still, you could still go to, you could still go and socialize with your friends and do everything that you want. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to, um, you know, the kinds of cataract surgery, if you go to an ophthalmologist, um, some ophthalmologists that are trained in um, laser cataract surgery will discuss um, the use of laser. Um, and basically laser cataract surgery itself is not covered um, by insurance, but what basically the laser cataract does is that the laser is applied to cataract so that you soften the cataract uh, through laser so that less ultrasound energy is used during the procedure. Um, so even though the visual outcome, you know, might be this, might be the uh, same because the same lens is going into the eye, um, we say that the risk of corneal swelling after surgery is less. Um, there's less time taken to do the actual like surgery, less energy used. Um, so overall, um, you know, it could be like a a, a better um, eye surgery. And because uh, the laser makes the incision, the every step of cataract surgery is like more predictable. Um, causing uh, less of a complication. Um, the kind of lenses that we put in, um, just I'll, I'll just go briefly over it. Um, what I tell patients is if they're older, um, if they have balance issues, um, I rather just correct them so that they have equal distance between both eyes. Um, and I just recommend that they wear a pair of glasses uh, to help them read. Um, the reason being is that if you did something like monovision where you correct one eye for distance and the other eye for reading, patients might have balance issues. So if I see a patient's already on a cane or a walker, I just tell them that they should correct both eyes for distance. Um, a lot of uh, women um, want to be glass independent. They don't want to have to take on their glasses and um, their glasses off. So they, they have come out with multifocal lenses, uh, which actually... Um, correct for distance, intermediate vision, and um, vision for a close-up. Um, so basically it does make you glass independent so that you don't have to wear reading glasses. Um, but I, I personally um, just want the patients to let, them, to let the patients know that it is associated with glare um, and halos at night. So if, you, if you're the type of patient, um, if you're the driver in the family and you, know, you have to drive at night, um, 
proceed with the multifocal lens with, with caution because sometimes uh, the glare and halos is very disturbing like to the patient. Um, when you're inside a home, it's, it's okay. Um, uh, but sometimes like the, um, the glare and halos could be very uh, disturbing. Um, so that's in terms of like, uh, that's in terms of like the lens coverage. There's some patients that wanna be corrected for reading so that they don't have to, uh, be, they don't. They could read without glasses, but if that's the, if that's the option they choose, then they have to wear glasses uh, for distance. Um, so it just depends on the patient. But when you go to the ophthalmologist, they'll have an extensive discussion with you about like what you want your uh, vision uh, to be set at. Um, so that's that's pretty much um, the gist on um, cataract surgery. Um, Raji, but, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I know you you do surgery. So which locations you can do surgery? I mean, um, for Long Island because I work at Northwell. Um, you know, there's the gardens. Uh, there's uh, there's a surgical center at Garden City, mm -hmm. um, and one in Syosset. Um, uh, not in the New York City. No. Yeah, there's one in New York City also, Manhattan. Um, I ear which is on 64. You can do cataract surgery, right? Yeah, these are the places. And um, how long is the surgery goes? Like two hours, three hours? Like no, no. So the surgery itself is fifteen minutes to oh. thirty minutes. Um, and so when you when you go to the um, so once you go into the pre-op area, the nurse will give you a bunch of dilating drops, like three three to four rounds of dilating drops, so that you're well dilated. Yeah. Um, and then they take you to the operative suite, and then you know by the time you're done, it's like very short thirty surgery. minutes. That's good, but yeah, it takes time to recover, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. And then and then you're discharged within an hour or two. I um, also have a question. Like I, I know some friend. They they have cataract. They don't drive nighttime. I help them, right? So until how long they should wait? You think they should do immediately uh, surgery or, you know? So one of the issues is that the longer you wait for cataract surgery, the more difficult it becomes to do. Oh, yeah. so if you have as the problem, cataract, you should immediately yeah. go for surgery. Yeah, as the cataract advances, at least they should go for an evaluation. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like cataracts slowly progress unless, you know, like, unless you're like an uncontrolled diabetic or you have other uh, comorbidities, um, you know, like it's it not that they- happens when you age, right? I mean, like maybe yeah. after 50 or so, right? Yeah, yeah other, I, would, uh, I wouldn't say other that- Other predisposing, is... Jyoti ji, other predisposing factors, that's what I was gonna ask her once she's done, is uh, young people who are prone to cataract how often they should go to ophthalmologists rather than once a year, especially the asthmatic patient who are on steroids, allergy people who take steroids, diabetic. Should they start uh, doing uh, more uh, precautions and go for checkup or once a year is enough, you think? So for diabetics, we definitely have to see them once a year. Um, once. once a year. If they like, and you know, once a, it ends, the follow-up depends on what we see. So if they have no diabetic retinopathy, um, no bleeding in the retina, no abnormal like blood vessels growing, then we say come back in a year. Um, for patients that might have like mild to moderate like diabetic retinopathy, um, once they come to a comprehensive ophthalmologist, um, we send them to a retina specialist uh, just to, because the retina specialist will do additional tests to make sure that like uh, the retina is getting well perfused um, and that there's no long-term damage to the retina. Um, um, Mm -hmm. that, that's very good. How about the pre-op? You mentioned you put an antibiotic drop. Is there any medical clearance you ask for? Or it, since it's a minor 15-minute surgery, is there any preparation people have to do? COVID testing, anything that's right. needed for? So um, unfortunately, patients still have to do COVID testing within five days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've never entered a, uh, we've never entered like a COVID-free uh, testing a window. Um, so patients do have to get COVID tested five days, up to five days prior to the procedure. Um, secondly, um, you do have to get medical clearance from your primary care doctor within 30 days. Okay. Um, if you have like cardiac issues, you, you'll you probably have to get cardiac clearance. Um, if you have neurological issues, um, you'll also probably have to get uh, neuro, neuro, um, neuro clearance, um, but it's done within 30 days. Um, like of, of the of the surgery. Prajit, we are doing so sorry, we are doing a Facebook live, and uh, Shalini Bansal just asked something. You know, if uh, I, I want to ask you, she's saying please give some information about narrow angles and floaters in the eye. Glaucoma, yeah, I guess. Okay, um, so what? Um, so with floaters, um, you know, 
the simple way to explain it is that as we all um, get older, what happens is that our eyeball is made up of a jelly called a vitreous. Um, and basically when that, um, you know, vitreous like liquefies, like what, what happens is that we something we see something called a posterior vitreous detachment or floaters. Um, sometimes those floaters are more noticeable, like, you know, against like uh, white backgrounds, um, you know, when you're in bright light. Um, but eventually, uh, you know, we hope that they do get lighter with time. The only time that floaters are um, scary is that if you see multiple floaters, like, you know, one day you wake up and you're seeing like thousands of floaters, like um, in your eye, hundreds of floaters, um, if it's associated with flashing lights, um, or if you see a curtain in your vision, um, if you see any of those three symptoms, then that could be a sign of a retinal detachment, which requires like urgent attention. Um, so that's when you have to see the ophthalmologist. Um, that's when you have to see the ophthalmologist like right away. Um, or if it's on a, if it's on a weekend, um, and there's no ophthalmologist um, around, you can send them to, um, they can always go to the North Shore or Long Island Jewish like emergency room on the weekend. But otherwise, if that happens, you guys can contact me personally and I'll see you. Oh, uh, that is people you can call you. I mean, should, can you yes. give your number also if anybody? Yeah, yeah. People, uh, people can text me on WhatsApp and then I'll, I'll usually reply within 20, within 24 hours. Can you yeah. uh, say your number, telephone number? Yeah, yeah. So my phone number is 516-946-4348. Uh, um, um, so, um, yeah, you can uh, you can message me on WhatsApp and then I'll. Uh... Rati, I have to appreciate you. You have done so much, you know. Yeah. With, uh, <clears throat> you know, you have helped organize so many community health fairs on Long Island. You know, that's great. You know, I don't know where you get this time. Also, you were involved in API. You know, yeah, and uh, yes. serve as the president also of medical student resident and fellow chapter for National API last year. So we are very yeah. happy for you. Thank yeah, you. I have one so more. You are young and you are sure. helping the community yes. since your young age. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more question, Prachi. Uh, Prachi. Yeah. Prachi Dua. Uh, you know what? Sometimes they say some vitamins like lutein and helps you. Does it help in any way for people to because they to take vitamins anyway? So, what is your opinion about vitamins for the eye? Any yeah. any special? Or yes. Are you the carrots, you know, what, what we were told as a young gajar khao, gajar khao. Can you please comment on that? Yes, yes. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm going to comment on two things. One is um, the question about the, the, narrow, the narrow angles. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, th the thing about uh, narrow angles is that um, narrow angles can only be um, detected or the diagnosis can be made like when you actually go to the eye doctor and they examine you under the slit lamp. Um, and... Uh, you know, based on whether, uh, so what happens is that you refer, the reason that narrow angles is an issue is that as, as your natural lens becomes bigger with, with age, it occupies more space in the eye and your pressures can slowly go up contributing to glaucoma, which is like a loss of peripheral vision. So we always, um, we always uh, either like we'll examine that the ophthalmologist will examine your eye pressures and see you every six months, or if they're very concerned that one day, you know, uh, you can go into um, angle closure where your pressure might rise as high as like 60 in the eye and you can have like acute vision loss. Um, they will send you to a glaucoma specialist to create a little space um, in the iris, which is like the brown part of your eye, um, so that uh, there's no fluid uh, buildup in the eye so that the pressure always like stays normal in the eye. Um, the going to uh, vitamins, um, you know, uh, you've seen commercials on on um, yes. on TV for like Preservision and um, ARADS, um, and and those vitamins contain beta carotene, you know, which is found uh, in carrots and and you know lutein. Um, so you know, studies were done that showing that like um, you know taking these vitamins can help with macular degeneration, um, age related macular degeneration, um, and which is a which is a disease of like the central um, uh, portion of the retina, um, which can uh, be associated with distortion of vision. So sometimes like if patients are reading something, sometimes like the letters might appear that they're jumping or lines might not appear straight. Um, if you have any of those symptoms, you should definitely get checked by an ophthalmologist because it could allude to like maybe possibly having like macular degeneration. Uh, so what I tell my patients is that if they have a strong family history of like macular degeneration, like there's no harm in taking vitamins. Um, I'm always about vitamins unless it's like contraindicated by your um, primary care doctor. Very good. Very good. So the yeah. vitamins do help sometimes. But how about the carrots, my dear? Should I start eating more carrots? 
Yeah, like, everybody should. Yeah, everybody should have carrots in the form of a uh, gajar halwa. <laughs> we'll contribute to diabetes. Jyoti ji will make gajar halwa for you and me. And yeah, exactly. Patrick, <laughs> can you give some more like prevention kind of you know things for eyes little bit you know daily use you know. Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say the most important thing is, um, you know, even when it comes to macular degeneration, like smoking is not good. You know, you should definitely try to avoid smoking. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Um, you know, like uh, smoking is a risk factor for making um, not only like macular degeneration worse, but like thyroid eye disease also. Um, secondly, um, you should always wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. Uh, you know, UV UV protection um, is is extremely important uh, for cataract prevention. And you should wear um, good sunglasses, right? Not like, you know. Yeah, good sunglasses. Quality. <laughs> but as it, uh, designer glasses? What designer uh, you are wearing? Uh, we will buy that one, doctor. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even, I don't even tend to go out in the sun to help my skin, like, you know, oh. very sparingly. <laughs> also, I'm also working all day. So by the time I leave, like it's dark outside. But, um, yeah, but just, but just get a good, you know, like you can go to Costco, you know, like you get, get a good good pair of like prescription like sunglasses. It's like it's very important to protect your eyes. Mm -hmm. You said thirty two million surgeries a year. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, for cataract. Yeah, that's like that was like the estimated who number like the World Health Organization numbers. And um, the last thing is like leafy vegetables are important. You know, but we we all eat leafy vegetables. Leafy, absolutely, absolutely. So that's great. Uh, yeah, advice. Yeah, that's yeah. Really, uh, Jyoti ji, you can conclude. Then I will. Uh, uh, yeah, what yeah. I'm saying is you are uh, very popular. People try to come on the Zoom. I don't know where they got ID, but I didn't enter because our format is only three of us. Yeah. Anyway, Asha Dua is saying your mom name is also Dr. Asha Dua. She's saying thank you so much for having info, uh, informative session. We love Prachi Dua. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You so many fans, Prachi. Uh, you're so popular among you. Indians, you know, uh, among you so Americans much. also, but you know. Yes. Jyoti in the Desi doctor group, she is very popular. She makes comments, she gives advice, you know, go there, go there. I was very impressed during because they yeah, didn't you have told me that, yeah. Yeah, so I was really, very, I said, young people to get involved and you are really. And I don't know if you're in the practicing group advice there or not, because I don't see your name much there. That would be nice, we uh, should have, if you're not there. Okay, yeah. I'll definitely yeah. check it out. So, Prati, yeah. thank you very much. You are so busy, but you know, uh, you gave us this, this date one month back, and you are here on time. And you know, great advice. And uh, you. wanted to come thank back you. again, you know, maybe yes. within one or two months, you know, you okay, can definitely will. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can do glaucoma, which is very important for um, yeah, you. we can talk about glaucoma and, uh, and macular also, degeneration. Also problems during like adolescence, you know, children grow up and everything, just a little bit. So they can, you know, people have grandchildren, people have young mothers have children. So they also should be aware that the eyes are the windows to the world. You don't have yeah. good eyes, you don't have windows. Yeah, that would be- no, I definitely will. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else you want to say, Prachi, to the Indian community who's watching you? Yeah. Um, no, what I, would, what I would just say is that, uh, like, you know, basically uh, just make sure that, you know, you always follow up with an ophthalmologist um, as you get older, like once, like once, once a year. I think, I think that's a, that's a good start. Okay. Like we see dentists, like we see our, you know, uh, internal medicine doctor, we should all also see ophthalmologists. Ophthalmologist, yeah. Just to screen for glaucoma and macular degeneration. These are things that are happening inside the eye that you can't even see. Um, and also, it also helps the ophthalmologist to like monitor the cataracts year to year. Uh, to see like when when it's affecting your vision. Um, yeah. And you also said if you have cataract, you are diagnosed, but don't wait and go for the surgery, right? Yeah. That I don't know, Jyoti ji, because there are some people who never progress for ten years. So I think. Right. Yeah. I go yeah every year. Yeah. Go, go every, every year. year. When mm -hmm. it, it, the cataract will only be removed when it's like visually significant. Yeah. Um, if it's not significant, it's if it's not impacting a person's life. Um, then, um, you know, then we wouldn't do cataract surgery. Um, yeah, like you can't drive nighttime. I know so many of my friends, they say we can't drive. 
So I yeah. tell them, you know, then they do the surgery, you know. I mean, that's what I'm not a doctor, but that's what I advise them. Oh, that, that's that's the surgery so that you can drive, yeah. you're not depending on others. Quality, right? quality of life is very important. And if they can't drive, then they definitely go to ophthalmologist, go to Dr. Prachi, do everybody, give her more work. Yeah, and even if you, even if you, uh, you know, if even if there are patients like that can't drive at at night and they're not emotionally ready to do the surgery, that's totally fine. You know, oh. you can, you can, we can like wait um, because it's it's basically all up up to the patient to do it because it's an elective procedure. Um, you know, we don't say that it's a life or death situation. It's just impacting like the quality of right life. So what I tell my patients is like only we should do surgery when you're emotionally ready to do it, right? There are no um, side effects anyway, right? I mean, other. I mean, and the risk the risk of complication is very very little, close to like you know close to one percent. But um, but you know, like you also don't want to wait until like you're yeah. 80, 80 to do like cataract oh, surgery is- because. As you get older, as you approach 80s, like it's hard, it's harder to tolerate anesthesia. You have other medical problems, which might like not let you, um, you know, which might not let you basically get cleared for surgery. So like, you know, you want to do it at the right time, but it doesn't mean that you have to like, if you can't see at night that you have to do it like right away, but you know, eventually in the next like five years, as Dr. Cholera said. I, okay, she's so right. you say something then uh, I, I, just, I have a joke she says don't wait so here is a joke about a husband who needed a cataract surgery so you have to laugh even if you don't feel like all of you he, he he needed a cataract surgery but he kept avoiding kept avoiding kept avoiding finally he went for cataract surgery and when he went for an eye checkup like three days or four days later after the surgery in the olden days they used to put a big patch you know so he, he, the doctor removed the patch. How do you feel? He says, no, give me my cataract back at home. I have to look at my wife every day and I don't know. Oh my God. Like... <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> these are the side effects you see too clearly after that. Too clearly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. For okay. Yeah, so thank we you. Have to respect the time. Our time is over and uh, thank you. you know, time went so fast. So much. Yeah. Excellent. You know, I mean, I learn a lot. You know, every yes, day absolutely. I wait and I learn a lot. Yeah. And Prachi, this uh, health is wealth. You know, we also you know merge it with music because music yeah. is also related to health. You know, right. so, so Prachi has to say one line. But today our two friends have birthday: Amita Karwal and Rachna Shadatpuri. Today is their birthday, so we wish happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> and also, we just want to sing. I just want to sing one line. तुम जियो हजारों साल साल के दिन हो पचास हजार हैप्पी बर्थडे टू यू हैप्पी बर्थडे टू यू ओके आई हैव टू प्राची जी पहले आप गाना गाएंगी एक लाइन अमिता के लिए आई कैन से no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to defer singing. Cause I feel like if people, uh, I don't sing like my dad. So he's a great, so your mom also. She's yeah. your mom is that one song they have. I never forget that song. That song comes on the radio. Your mom said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so sweetly. Anyway, here, Amita and Rachna, happy birthday to both of you. And uh, we are all in the community together. And my song is Na Mangu Sona Chandi, Na Mangu Hire Moti, Ye Mere Kis Kam Ke, Deti Hai Dil Ke, Badle Me Dil De, Ge 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 Ge. Amita, this song is specially for you because we always say Dil Do or Dil Lo. Happy birthday to both of you, Jyoti Ji. All right. Thank, Thank you. Happy birthday. Yes. And we are going to uh, see all our audience next uh, Monday, 12.30 p.m. in Health is Well. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you Prachi. Thank you. Dr. Take care, Prachi. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye.